Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Savage Live from Beverly Thrills. Today's show is entitled, Come Back America. Come Back America. After years of this fraudulent, backstabbing, phony administration, America is craving someone to save us from this sickness of liberalism. I'll give you an example. Local San Francisco story. French tourists mugged on SF's Twin Peaks. Three French tourists snapping photos on a Twin Peaks hill were robbed of their passports, cameras, and money. Officials said Tuesday. Ha! You know, the difference between an official and an unofficial in San Francisco is, you know what? One of the victims, an 81-year-old man, was shoved to the ground, lost consciousness. Three victims and a witness told authorities there were two male suspects. Authorities were looking for the suspects. Of course, there's no descriptions of the suspects in San Francisco. It is free of suspects unless they're white males who are Christian and wearing a cross who love Donald Trump in America. In San Francisco, everyone else is a victim. But we pretty much know who the criminals were, don't we? We pretty much know who they were. No, they're not ISIS, that's for sure. They're busy raping eight-year-old girls while the phony American and Western women's movement, which doesn't exist at all except to attack white heterosexual Christian males, says virtually nothing about the slaves, slave markets, kidnapping, rape of eight-year-old girls by these vermin in the Islamic State. We'll talk about that in a minute. In addition to the wave of refugees, which is really an organized invasion being conducted by George Soros and his puppet, Donald Obama. But I want to talk about something else, which is the race warfare that Obama has sparked in America, which is spreading like a retrovirus, invading and destroying our defense cells. And autoimmune disease is less to fear than Barack Obama. Headline, black professor chastises white Americans saying, admit to the racist poison inside of you. Now, how could a professor say a thing like that unless he felt empowered by the chief racist in the White House. A so-called Emory University professor wrote an open letter which was published by the morons in the New York Times. Some professor of philosophy, George Yancey, a real, real genius. Another one. You know, in America, anyone could be a professor, as you well know, especially if they're a minority. Then right away, they're a philosophy professor. So this moron writes a letter called Dear White America, and he called his letter a gift to white people. As you read this letter, he said, take a deep breath. Make a space, blah, 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 blah. He says he's failed women. And so he now wants white people to admit that they're racists. He says it's painful to let go of your white innocence. To use this letter as a mirror, one that refuses to show you what you want to see. Blah, blah, blah. Responsibility for those who live under the yoke of whiteness. Of course, the yoke of whiteness has permitted a loser like him to become a professor. The yoke of whiteness permits a loser like him with a low IQ to even call himself a professor. That's the yoke of whiteness. So he writes, I'm asking you to enter into battle with your white self. I'm asking that you open yourself up, speak to admit to the racist poison that is inside of you. Mr. Yancey, the philosophy professor, went on to claim that all white people are part of a racist system. And he goes on to tell you to touch your child's hair tonight. And understand that your child is also fundamentally a racist because they're white. Now, we would dismiss this as something coming out of Hitler's Germany in reverse, which means it's the same thing as the racism. The racism that Hitler's minions put out against Jews, Slavs, and others 
is equivalent to what this racist black professor is saying about white people. Do you get what I just said to you? Do you understand how sick the country has become under Dr. Obama, who is like a maniac doctor? It's like a maniac doctor in a madhouse who tells everyone to look for the racist inside of themselves and turn it on white people. Because a phony like Obama could never have gotten anywhere was it not for division and race warfare and sex warfare and economic warfare. He wouldn't have gotten out of the starting gate without all of those tactics. Welcome to the show again live from California. Come back America is the title. The real story that got agitated me this morning is ISIS releasing a rape handbook to their scum, to their subhuman fighters, who, as far as I am concerned, should be rounded up. Oh, I don't want to go into it. It's a family show. I would use cluster bombs on them, and those that I would capture, I would throw into an arena with live pigs and put it on pay-per-view so the world can see the ISIS fighters screeching like the little girls they really are when they have no power. All of the vermin of the world, the losers of the world, the type of men, the subhumans that join Hitler to torture innocent people in concentration camps, the world's losers are coming from around the world to join ISIS, which makes them a convenient target for a neutron bomb. Now that we know where they all live. We used to be told, I remember 10 years ago, oh, you can't use warfare against radical Islam because it's everywhere. There's no organized state. There's no organized nation. There's no organized city. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, yes, there is. They're all in a couple of cities now. And so if we had a real leader who really wanted to wipe ISIS out, it could be done in a few days. But I've said to you for months now, that ISIS is a creation of the United States of America and several other Western powers. It's a Frankenstein that was created to take down Assad as a factotum army and let them do the dirty work. After which time the Western powers figured they would then take on ISIS and dismember them. But instead they became a rabid mad dog army of insane people. Which is winning, by the way, not losing. So they release a handbook on, on how to treat your sex slaves. Fifteen sickening new rules revealed. A new guidance on the rules of rape put out by the Islamic State. Emphasis on I. New rules set out how members of the terrorist organization may treat their sex slaves. A Muslim fatwa was issued back in January, according to documents seized by U.S. Special Ops, which have only now been released, now that Obama's on vacation, I guess the government... Is uh, not as oppressive as it would be once he's back, the chief retrovirus. And it begins like this. I'm not making up one word for those of you who say this is not Islam. One of the graces which Allah has bestowed upon the state of caliphate, up, bestowed up the state of caliphate, is the conquest of large surface areas of the country. And one of the inevitable consequences of jihad is that women and children of infidels will become captives of Muslims. Attention, liberal morons. That means you and your children, you idiots, you. Go vote for Hillary, you psychos, you. Quote now, consequently, it is necessary to clarify some rules pertaining to captured prisoners to avoid any violations of Muslim rules in dealing with them. Here are the new rules for those of you who say it's not Islam. One. Are you ready? It is not permissible for the owner of a female captive to have intercourse with her until after she has had a menstrual cycle and become clean. You see how clean these men are? You see how advanced they are as a civilized civilization? I mean, they do have rules. So if she's nine years old and she hasn't menstruated, they're so kind that they won't rape her unless someone's not looking. Two. If she does not menstruate and is pregnant, he is not allowed to have intercourse with her until after she has given birth. So don't tell me ISIS is not compassionate. This is a very compassionate army. Three, it is not permissible to cause her to abort if she is pregnant. So you see, they're very conservative in a way. They don't believe in abortion. They want another soldier being born or another sex slave. Four, if the owner of a female captive releases her, only he can have intercourse with her. And he cannot allow someone else to have intercourse with her. Five, if the owner of a female captive who has a daughter suitable for intercourse has sexual relations with the latter, 
he is not permitted to have intercourse with her mother. And she is permanently off limits to him. You see, they are very compassionate. This is a very sane organization. For those of you who argue it's not Islamic, you have to understand this is based upon Islamic interpretation by the uh, chief bugaboo who looked into the Quran for this advice. Number six, the owner of two sisters is not allowed to have intercourse with both of them. Rather, he may only have intercourse with one. The other sister is to be had by him. If he were to relinquish ownership of the first sister by selling her, giving her away, or releasing her. You see, so in many ways they think like progressives do. Seven, if the female captive is owned by a father, his son cannot have intercourse with her and vice versa. Moreover, intercourse with his wife's female captive is also not permissible. Eight, if a father had intercourse with his female captive, then gave her away or sold her to his son, he is no longer permitted to have intercourse with her. Don't tell me that they're not civilized with rules. These are all based on Quranic uh, laws, by the way. Nine, if the female captive becomes pregnant by her owner, he cannot sell her, and she is released after his death. You see how kind it is? So he rapes her until he drops dead from sexual exhaustion. Let's say, he, let's say she's 10, and he rapes her till he's 50, and finally he dies. So after 40 years of, of being raped, he releases her. So don't tell me it's not a compassionate... Uh, derivation of Islam, please. Uh, ten, if the owner releases his female captive, then he is not permitted to have intercourse with her afterwards because she has become free and is no longer his property. If two or more individuals are involved in purchasing a female captive, none of them are permitted to have sex with her because she is part of a joint ownership. That is so incredibly legalistically advanced. I'm just flabbergasted at how advanced they are. Twelve, it is not permissible to have intercourse with a female captive during her menstrual cycle. Well, because they're very clean. These are clean men. I mean, these paint are as clean as the driven snow. Look at that. Thirteen, it is not permissible to have anal sex with a female captive. Well, sorry about that. Sorry, you progressives. You can't join ISIS now. Fourteen, the owner of a female captive should, should show compassion towards her. Be kind to her not humiliate her, and not assign her work she is unable to perform. Well, Fifteen of the sex rules of ISIS, the Islamic State, the owner of a female captive should not sell her to an individual whom he knows will treat her badly, or do unto her what Allah has forbidden, because Allah is so kind that he permits them to have sex slaves and to sell them on the auction block. This shows you how kind Allah is. It is now approximately... 18 minutes after the hour, which means it's time to release the strike jets on our aircraft carriers if we had a commander-in-chief and drop the cluster bombs, the bunker-busting bombs, any other bomb we have to put the women out of their misery and take these vermin and send them to Allah land. And you can drop a package of bacon along with the bomb. I am so sick reading this. We can't put up with this anymore. The apologists for Islam, the apologists who tell us it's not based on Islamic law, should be ashamed of themselves. You know, the black professor insists that white Americans should admit to the racist poison inside of you. I would say, Mr. Black Professor, what would you have to say about Muslims who don't admit to the hatred inside of them towards everyone who is not a Muslim? Should they look inside themselves, Mr. Black Professor? For what is worse, your imagined white racism or the very real Islamic murder and slavery and kidnapping that's ongoing while you put together your racist diatribes? This is the Savage Nation. ISIS releases a rape handbook to fighters with 15 sickening new rules revealed while the sick lying progressives in the West turn a blind eye to all of this. I'm sorry to bring you the bad news during Christmas week, but unless we get a real leader willing to wipe these vermin off the planet, there will be more girls screaming in misery around the clock. Back in a moment. So we just read a rape manual put out by the Islamic State that was written by one of the uh, chief animals, one of the holy animals in the Islamic State, based on Quranic law. And I keep hearing from the apologists it's not based on Islam, well, we understand.